Darkwish. Ah, there you are. Professor Doctor Dark Windang will be here, you see. And Lord Windermere. Yes, and Lord Windermere. You see, I got a lot of questions. A lot of questions that made me very happy. Very happy because it means that you people understand that I'm actually infinitely more interesting than SBRE Brown is. So, I have printed them all. Now, by the way, I'm not wearing a dress shirt because this is my weekend. And I'm a professor. And even though I am a professor, I like to relax too. So just bear with it. You will now see me in a t-shirt. All right. Let's go on to the first question. God, time's flying already, I know. Isaac Yo Kelson asks, Dear Dr. Dangbury, if you have the good sense to give Lord Windermere a top hat, why do you wear a cabbie's flat cap rather than something more august? Perhaps one of those octagonal regalia caps would be more appropriate if it were in Cambridge colours. Well, I, I actually received a couple of questions about Lord Windermere's top hat. I don't fully understand what is so specific and so interesting about the headwear of my pet. I mean, if you think Lord Windermere's top hat is strange, you should see what's on the head of my cock. Yeah, you may want to explain that one, mate. Oh. Why is that? Well, I don't understand what the confusion could be, but in any case, I have a, a pet rooster. He's called Sir Gerald. I would show him to you, but unfortunately I can't, because, you see, he was a little worked up. He always gets gets quite worked up whenever he sees the neighbor's pussy. I don't know what's, what, what that is, but it, it just happens. Anyway, then there was C.B. Ebel, who says, Isaac Yockelson, that's the deer stalker, tut tut. The professor is going to have your guts for garters with that question. You have been warned. Well, you know, I have stopped wearing garter belts for quite a while now, so don't worry about that too much. But what I can say is, yes, this is a deer stalker hat. It is not a flat cabbie hat. It's not a cabbie flat hat. It's just a deer stalker. I stalk a lot of deer. I, I, I stopped doing it for a while, but I, I've started again. I love doing it. I love stalking deer. Lord Windermere has a top hat. He is a lord. And in a later question, I'm probably going to answer uh, how exactly we got together. All right. And then Musk and Dusk asks, I wonder if he knows Mr. Holmes and Watson. They obviously shop at the same place. Oh, yes, I do. We have tea a lot together. You see, often Conway Stewart joins in too. We go way back. It's always great fun. It's a jolly old time. All right. Then we have Dave Gordon, who says, Fine, I'll bite. Prof, where do you buy your dear stockers? I'm in Boston Mar. I don't know what Boston Mar is. I've never been there. I'm in Boston Mar and know where to go for the lobsters. Well, that's good for you. Good for you that you know where to go for the lobsters. As to the deer stalkers, I would say I buy them in the deer stalker emporium. And if you send me a private message, I may tell you where that is. All right. Then we have Les Cartwright. Les Cartwright, very interesting. I used to know a guy called Les Cartwright. I don't think it's the same person. Les Cartwright says, Professor, I hope you'll consider a stream of questions, please. Can you give us some feedback on where you were born and your childhood? I have a feeling you had a somewhat traumatic childhood instead of going over the fields with your friends and skinny dipping in the river. Well, my childhood can be summed up as follows. I was born in West Nipshire, and that's where I grew up. I used to hang out a lot with Conway Stewart, a very dear friend of mine, very dear friend. We go back quite a long time, I would say from since the day I was born. You see, we were born the same day, a lot of people do not know this, but it is true, and we hang out a lot, and we do a lot together. In childhood, we used to do a lot of things together, we did not go skinny dipping, but we would swim in ink. Conway Stewart's dad had an ink factory, and we would swim a lot in the ink, often not naked. Also, did you reside as a public schoolboy in the house dormitory, and did they have any initiation challenges which you can legally reveal to us? For legal reasons, no. As a teenager, did you ever suffer from spots or boils on your bottom, and what did your parents or public school matron use to help you get over these? For example, did they use the vacuum method, where steam, if put into a white neck bottle, then placed over the boil? The resulting is a vacuum as the steel cools would cause the saw to be drawn out, then germline can be put on it. No. Finally, what were your qualifications on your PhD, etc.? My qualifications were excellent, sir. And it, on, upon request, I can definitely send you a, a full CV. I have the qualifications in ex eccentricism and the laws of metaphysical alchemy, which I think we should resonate on in various wavelengths and engage in the various byproducts. I have no idea what that means. Thank you for your kind indulgence. You're most welcome. I'm going to cough now. 
<coughs> Thank you. John Newton asks, tell me about your childhood. Well, John, I just did. So that's a beautiful thing. Raymond Smith asks, Professor, where did you do dissertation? What research did you do for your dissertation? What postgraduate research have you done? I did my PhD research in Cambridge. And I will talk more about Cambridge later in this program, event, video, questions, personal thing, quest. You see? Um, what research did you do for your dissertation? I did a mixture of field work. A lot of it went down in the Conway Stewart factory, but I also did a lot of field work in various pen shops all over the world. Also, I did a lot of literature research. I tested many, many notebooks, and uh, I wrote a brilliant dissertation, uh, if I may say so. I do say so, in fact. But the title was Why I Am So Great. And it has been a great success. It has been reprinted many, many times. Postgraduate research, a lot. I've been a guest speaker at the University of Woolmaloo for quite a while. That's in Australia. Um, I have been in various German, German universities as a professor. Uh, fr well, fr I deny the existence of France. Nothing happened there. Uh, a few things went down in Spain, though. And one in Tokyo. But for legal reasons, I can't say too much about that. Philip Broyer asks, what about autographs with the professor? Is it possible to get one? Definitely. Send me a message, send me a self-addressed stamped envelope, and you'll get a uh, signature. Benny B asks, I need the rest of the Opera Element series because I want to have them complete, especially the water is missed. Where should I look or ask? I would ask fountain pen people on eBay. The Founder Pen Network, FB Geeks, very droll site. Uh, I would be there, I would go there, I would ask people. Keep your eyes peeled on eBay. These things come by sometimes. Sudhir Kalyanika asks, Hello, Professor, here are my questions. One, where exactly did you learn to draw the way you do now? Is it an innate talent or do you really work at it? Of course, you work at it to reach where you reach now. No. It is an innate talent. My drawing skills are legendary. Legendary, I would say. And it's definitely an innate ability. Yes. Second question. Where did you meet Lord Windermere? Now, that is an interesting story. While I was at the University of Woolmaloo, I found Lord Windermere. This is Lord Windermere, my pet. Um, he was mining for crabs in Australia. It was a very interesting experience. We happened to meet each other in a bar. I don't drink. But I was in a bar having some water, which I usually do. Water on the rocks. Very nice. I recommend it. Gives you very clear mind and excellent drawing abilities. Uh, and Lord Windermere scuffled in. And then he said something like, Hello, mate, or something. I can't really imitate him very well. Um, but uh, he, we, we just hit it off. It was great fun. We had a terrific evening, a lot of interesting talks, and it turns out that we both have a very strong thing for crab salad. And that was this, this common thing that really made things just hit it off very naturally. Very naturally, and that's how I got to know Lord Windermere. Where did you meet Asbury Brown, and what's your relationship to that bastard? I assume it was you who designed to meet him and not the other way around. Well, obviously, S. B. R. Brown came to Cambridge University to study penology with me. He knew I was the world's foremost expert in the field, and he said, Professor Dr. Ivan Angleby, oh, can I please study with you? Oh, I want to know, I want to learn everything there is to know. Oh, oh, please transfer your magnificent knowledge, blah, 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 blah. It was not a success. Academically speaking, S. B. R. Brown I regret to say this, is a failure. It was not a success. He did not get along very well. Uh, it was not It was not so great. No. And I do not say this at all because I'm jealous of his 14,000 subscribers and all this stuff. I'm sure that if I were to launch my own YouTube channel, which I very well, very well, well, very well, may, well, may do that, I'm sure I'll have a lot of subscribers very quickly. I'm not jealous. The thing that annoyed me the most about S. B. R. Brown was that every time I handed him a scientific work to read, be it a book or a paper, he read it, he took it from me, 
And then he said, well, I'm going to read it, I'll tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and then maybe I'll give you a presentation sample. It drove me insane. So at some point we decided it was best not to go on together. 4. Why do you still patronize him if he is so boring? And I agree with you, he is boring. Always talking about pens and knives and other awful stuff. I hope you are happy I've asked so many questions. Cheers. Of course I'm happy. Um, well, he is boring. That's his all as to Asbury Brown. Doesn't do anything for me. Kit Hoon Tan asks, How did you and Not Winnemere meet? And why did he decide to spend his time in Shola? <coughs> I coughed. Um, I, I explained to you how we met. I explained this. I don't have to go over that again. But, the reason he's on my shoulder is that he has fairly short legs, as you can see, illustrated by here. Short legs. And so he likes to be in my shoulder. It's a great way to carry a pet. I used to do it with my Rottweiler, but it wasn't a great success. So, uh, he, he died. So he, he choked on some ink. Um, now, Winnemay is now on my shoulder, and every day, at noon, I walk him. We put a little leash on, and I walk him on the university grounds, Cambridge. Very nice, with a very nice garden. We should visit one day. It's lovely. Doug Essinger Hilliman asks, Professor, would you be willing to step aside and allow Lord Windermere to be featured in the upcoming question and answer video? Well, my dear friend, what do you say? Oh yeah, of course I would do that. That would be great. Lord Windermere agrees. I think it would be a great idea, so very soon there's going to be an announcement of that. Roland de Groot asks, Hmm, okay then, we have seen a lot of, maybe all of as, as, as his pen collection. Curious about your preferred fountain pen. Conway Stewart. Winston. That's my preferred pen. Philip Brewer asks, Love it, and here are the questions. What do you think about ballpoints? They're the instruments of the devil, sir. Let me bring one close to me. Do you know Hamish? Yes, I do. On the brunches I often have with Sherlock Holmes and Watson and Conway Stewart, Hamish often joins. He's a bit of a ladies' man, you know. So it's amazing how many women just swarm across when he is close by. I don't know what it is. People seem to find him very attractive. Maybe it's the accent. I don't know. Maybe it's his, his robust physique. Maybe it's his, his, his skilled fingers. That's his theory. He says, I don't, I don't understand why that would be attractive to women. But, you know, they had it. Where did you meet Hamish for the first time? Well, Wesnibshire is where I was born. Hamish was born in East Nibshire, which is to the east of Wesnibshire. And sometimes, you know, I would meet him. He was always a very robust guy, very strong. And um, that's how we met. Is there a lady who lives together with a professor? Why on earth would there be a lady living with me? Is the professor also a nib master? Well, I would say so. A master at everything. Alright. Mark Gardiner asks, As a vegan, I'm incredibly concerned about the health and well-being of Lord Windermere. Lobsters should be swimming in the oceans and not perched upon the shoulder of a rather pompous English professor. Free Lord Windermere. And then LeBron James answers, Lobsters should be seen with a side of her butter. But I'm not sure about that. As to freedom, Lord Windermere is free. It's free to go. He has a daily bath, often not in boiling water, because he doesn't really even like that. But believe me, he is very well kept for. Don't 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 be afraid. I appreciate the concern. I do. But no. Joseph Quintone asks, would Lord Windermere taste good boil in water and serve with clarified butter? And then Musk and Dusk answers, You can't do that to Lord Windermere, off with your head for even thinking of it. Well, it's entirely possible. I know that Brian and Lisa Anderson, very nice people, very nice people, once ate a cousin of Lord Windermere called Waverley in a restaurant. And apparently that was quite good. So it's entirely possible. Michelle Harvey asks, My dear Professor and Lord Windermere, I come to you in earnest and believe you to be my last hope. Interesting, I once found a recording that said, Help me, Professor Dangbury. You're my only hope. This reminds me of that. It is with great embarrassment and with some prompting by my husband that I come to you for help. My addiction to pornography is threatening my marriage. 
My husband has become aware of my guilty pleasure of endless video viewing on the subject of fountain pens and worse. I find my personal stash of pens to be shamelessly growing in spite of my sincere efforts to curb it. What can I do? Please advise. Well, dear Michelle, there is nothing sinful about playing with your pens. Don't worry about it. I have heard many of these rumors that playing with your pens is going to make you blind. It's going to make hair grow on the inside of your hands. It's all a lie. Indulge as much as you can in this guilty pleasure. Play with your pen. Play with your ink well. There is nothing wrong with it. It's all part of growing up and being a pen lover. So don't be scared. It will not threaten your marriage. You should ask your husband to join in. And then everything is going to be fine. Don't worry. BDM450. That's an odd name. Anyway, he asked, Professor, is it true that after everything, pen reviews, meals, sex, and beery Brown says, and that's all there is to it. You should ask Esbiri Brown. I'm not present when he has pen reviews, meals, sex. You know he always says it after pen reviews, because it's on bloody YouTube. That question makes no sense. When it comes to meals, I've had a few meals with him, and yes, he did say, and that's all there is to it. After sex... How on earth would I know? I do not know this. You should ask the man. Do I look like a bugger of boys? No. So, ask him. Bloody hell. Trevor Gay, Gray asks, Hi there, Professor. If an ink producer, say Gerbin or Waterman, were to produce an ink called Esbiri Brown, a nice brown with a hint of orange for the Dutch, would you lay the green egg of jealousy as an expression of your surprise and envy? What color tribute ink would celebrate you, Professor? What color is a dinglebri? Danglebri. Professor Dr. Tarquin Danglebri. The name Danglebri was traced all the way back to the 1400s. And the color, I don't know. It's, it's B-U-R-Y, not B-E-R-R-Y. Okay. Um, would I lay the green egg of jealousy? No, because nobody's going to give him an ink. Why would anyone give Asbury a bounty? It doesn't make any sense. Uh, my personal uh, ink would be red. I'm a very passionate person. Very passionate. I like long walks and moonlight dinners, or moonlight walks and long dinners. It doesn't really matter. I just like it. I'm very romantic and passionate. All right. Structural hazard. That's a very odd name. Structural hazard asks Professor Doctor Danglebury, what exactly was your penology PhD dissertation? I've already told you that. What was it like to conduct your research on this topic? Orgasmic, I would say. Penology is a wonderful field. Wonderful feel. You make very people, no, many people very happy, or very people many happy, whatever you prefer. Um, it's it's wonderful to do this. It's a very grateful feel. Very a lot of people benefit from the knowledge that you acquire uh, on the ultimate nib, the ultimate pen. We'll probably talk a little bit more about that later. Uh, it's wonderful. Enroll at your nearest university straight away. I would say you will not regret it. Mikey Khan asks. I have a few questions for you, Dr. Danglebury. I noticed that Esbury Brown learned to use a clear plastic sheet to prevent his hand oils rubbing on the paper and influencing the qualities of the ink and the nib when writing. Perhaps he has learned this from you. Yes, he has. Everything Esbury Brown knows, you can assume he has learned from me. Professor Dr. Tarkin. You see? And it was a brilliant idea. The clear sheet of plastic, best way to do it, and that's why I taught him this trick. My question is, why not use a simple wool cotton glove and cut out the thumb, index, middle finger parts and have a writing glove that would accomplish the same goal? I would love to hear your opinion about this. Oh, I'm so fancy! I just take a glove and I cut out the fingers to, to make the same thing happen. So bloody fancy! No, it's a ridiculous idea. It's the weirdest thing I've ever heard. You just use a plastic sheet, bloody hell. Anyway. Also, S. V. Ray Brown's favorite pens of Visconti Opera Elements. It would be nice to know what is your favorite pen and why. I already told you that. Conway Stewart Winston. Liz Fee Elds asks, Dearest Professor, I am wondering, what are your thoughts on using brush fountain pens for calligraphy? Not just Western calligraphy, but Chinese and Japanese calligraphy. Do you think it's kosher or not, and why? Looking forward to receiving your answer. If it doesn't have a nib, it's not kosher. It's that simple. Now, next question. Adam Clark asks, Dear Professor, Professor, what? No, Professor, 
Have you ever had a peckish moment and considered Lord Windermere with a side of salad? Also, how would you deal with a butler who burnt the toast? Most annoying, isn't it? Well, it's quite simple. As to eating Lord Windermere, I've never had that desire. As to butlers burning my toast, I take the toasting iron, I take their hand, I say, I will show you how long to put the but the bread in. You butter the bread, you put it in. I take the hand, I butter the hand, I put the hand in the toasting iron. You see, I'm not a violent man. But if someone scorches my toast, they get scorched. It's that simple. Now, William G916. What's with all these numbers and names? It doesn't make any sense. I'm Professor Dr. Darko Danglebury 1. Oh, I'm Professor Dr. Darko in 793.58933.578599976. Bloody hell. What happened to the days when children just have normal names without numbers or apostrophes in them? With what college are you affiliated at Cambridge? Are there examinations in penology at Cambridge? What are your three favorite fountain pens? Does Lord Windermere have an academic post as well? What college? The College of Penology, of which I am the chair. Are there examinations in penology at Cambridge? Oh, yes. A lot of examinations. I love them. Especially oral examinations. What are your three favorite fountain pens? Well, I would say that Conrad Seward Winston is number one. Number two, some of the higher end Visconti pens. Anyone? Could be Visconti or Bradman's. Could be Opera Chris. Could be Homo sapiens even. Number three. Any ballpoint you can take away from a ballpoint pen user to kill him with it. Now, does Lord Winnemere have an academic post as well? Yes, he's a book rest. I use him as that quite often. Tintin Pandia asks, Hello, Professor Dr. Darwin Dangbury. Tell me. Does Lord Windermere ever bite you with those deadly claws when you twos get into a fight, like when you delay him a crab salad? He has tried. But generally speaking, he's a very nice, calm, warm fellow. So, not really an issue. Raymond Luo asks, have you ever considered eating the lobster on your shoulder? We have already answered that question. The answer is no. Eat my pet. I don't eat a pet. Do you eat your pet? How often have you eaten your pet? Doesn't make any sense. Gourmet Pens asks Professor, do tell, have you ever been on a date with a woman? Of course I haven't! What on earth would be the point in that? I have much better ways to waste my time than going on dates with women. I Rangel TX asks Professor Dr. Targon Dangleby. Have you ever traveled to the wilds of Texas? Well, that's random. Do you have an opinion on the use of impossibly shaped human beings used as models in advertising? Sincerely, Ismail. Well, Texas? No. Disproportionately shaped humans in advertisement? I find it abhorring. Look at the street. Go onto the street on a Saturday. Look at all the people. Do they look, on average, ultra thin? Do they look skinny? No. So, for heaven's sake, stop using these extremely deformed women on the advertisement posters. It's disgusting. Now, CB Abel asks, what kind of fellow are you? A plus 2S or a plus 4S? I'm a plus 16S, sweetheart. Also, what do you and Lord Winnemere really get up to behind that book? For example, 1.56. Is the art of war a ruse? I love Lord Winnemere. That's all I say. Mac Amargo 386 says, How would you define a Philistine? Very good question. A Philistine, I would say, is a person who uses a lot of Philips equipment but continuously damages it. That is a first. Tokyo Rosa asks, what is your area of expertise, Professor? 
penology. Vikram Kalindindindindindi asks, Kalin, I may have mispronounced that name, Kalindindi asks, Dear Professor Dr. Dangleby, how come we never see you and Stephen together? Well, because I'm infinitely more interesting, so when I'm on screen, there's no need for him to be there. Also, do you have kids? God forbid, no. And is Lord Winnemere good with the ladies? Oh. 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 The stories I can tell you about Lord Windermere in bars, chatting up ladies. Don't get me stopped. He's ten inches, by the way. That's what he tells them, and apparently that evokes some type of romantic response. I don't know. Keith Plunkett says, I don't know who's worse, you or your lobster. I think we're about equally worse. Zet Chen three five eight says we need to know the professor's secret to longevity since he apparently knew Jeobin from back in since sixteen hundreds. Is he really Dorian Gray? Let's put it this way: I have one picture I never look at. Robbie Bluck says hello, Mr. Brown. Well, apparently this is a question for Mr. Brown, not for me. So let's skip that one. Lance T S R says, "Dear Professor, do you like the taste of lobster? If so, why haven't you eaten all winter yet? I'm not a fan of shellfish, crustaceans, mollusks. I just like the word mollusks. Mm mollusks. Mm mollusks. It's a very nice word when you think about it." Buff Man Fresh asks, I am fascinated by your red crustacean friend there. What is Lord Winnemere's lifestyle? Well, as I said, he was born, and then he went to Woolamaloo to do mining for crabs. Where was he born? He was born in the ocean. What university has he attended? He has not attended any university. In fact, he only has primary education, but I choose not to mention it to him. All right. How did you meet this extremely interesting lobster? I told you. So that's one. Ninja Cleaners <clears throat> asks, Professor Dr. Tarkin Dangleby, if you'd be so kind as to answer my questions. One, it's obvious you are infinitely more student in the knowledge of Fountain Pens. Do you find Esbury Brown's reviews noteworthy or just poppycock? Absolute and utter poppycock. Mm, mollusk, but poppycock. And two, do you own a baby blue convertible Jaguar? I could have sworn I saw you driving around Amsterdam last Thursday night in a baby blue convertible Jaguar with two blondes and a redhead. For legal reasons, I do not. Bob963 me says, I can only speak for myself, but questions were not asked out of respect for the lofty position you hold and your immense talent. I appreciate it. Thank you. By asking a fount pen question of such an esteemed personage as yourself seems like asking Stephen asking to help me balance my checkbook. Correct. But since you offered, how does one become doctor of penology? Where does one even begin? Bob, I'm very glad you came to me to answer this question for you. You enroll to university and you prepare for many hard, long years of study. Many a tome needs to be assimilated, but if you work hard enough, you can do it. Even with your limited cognitive capacities, I'm sure you can do it. Not everyone is as brilliant as I am, but I'm sure, with enough motivation, you can do it. You start by learning a lot, you start by studying the ultimate book of pens, you work your way up to the more complicated stuff, and you can do it. You can do it. I have faith in you, boy. You can do it. All right. Queen Katz asks, please reply to questions in video form. Thank you. Well, be my pleasure, Kat. Wagen Drei asks, why? Now, that is a question I have asked myself many, many times. Why? The answer is, 6.3. Now, Ryan Farretta asks, to the prof, what is the worst part about living with S.B.R.A. Brown? 
he thinks he's very smart. And putting up with that arrogance is very challenging. To Lord Windermere, has anyone ever tried to eat you? Well, there you have it. Apparently not. Alright, next question. James Kelly asks, Dear Dr. Dangbury, not to be impolite, but is Lord Windermere your assistant or are you merely his mouthpiece? I noticed he was vitally, no, he was visually upset when you called Esbury Brown a very negative and demeaning name. In fact, it blew his hat off. Please respond with due applause. No, I am not his mouthpiece. He is my loyal assistant. He has snipped many a pen in half by accident, but I don't blame him. He has these claws to work with. Um, a good assistant, very worthwhile, excellent in the lab, very precise, wonderful fellow. I really love him. Mark Rogers asks, what is your favorite color of ink? Red being so passionate as I am. React Cosmetics asks, this question is for Lord Windermere, is crab salad your favorite food? Yeah, it is. Well, there you have it. Um, why do you like it? Because it's bloody obvious. If you never had a good crab salad, you probably don't know what I'm talking about. It's absolutely marvelous. You can stuff my feet in hole with it any day of the week. He feels quite strongly about his crab salad, I'm afraid. Um, you seem hungry whenever I see you in the professor's videos. Is the professor making sure you get enough to eat? Well, I hardly ever is enough, you know. I mean, I can eat crap salad all day. Well, they have it. I mean, what can I say? Alex Hackman asks, Doctor, is it true you used the ballpoint once? Yes. Um, I asked someone if I could borrow a pen. I forgot my Winston. It happens. And he gave me a big ballpoint. I took the big ballpoint from him and then killed him with it. I'm not a violent man. But don't have me a ballpoint. Chris Norcross asks. That has a nice ring to it. Chris Norcross. Chris Cross. Nor Chris Cross. Chris Norcross. Cross Cross near Cross Chris Nos. Chris. Professor Dr. Tarquin Dangby. You seem to be one of the most interesting men to have ever lived. Mollusk. That was not the question. I just wanted to say the word. So my questions for you are as follows. Do you drink beer often or not always? Actually, I never drink alcohol, my dear friend, so don't worry about that. What type of beer do you prefer to drink? Do Esqui, Do Esqui, Pabst, Budweiser, etc. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Just give me a glass of water any day of the week or on a Sunday, a bottle of ink. But not Bay State Blue. I had that once and that was... Um, my stomach, I will not tell you the bathroom stories that that there. Luap Warag asks, would you like a good recipe for lobster salad? No, thank you, but crab salad is welcome, always. Nicolt2000 asks, what is your birth date, including year? Um, last time I checked, it was February 23rd, 1473, but I could be off a year. Avinash Chandra asks, where are you sitting? This place looks very narrow and stark white. Uh, yes, it's a tunnel. It's my ink testing tunnel. I throw ink through this all the time and see how well it sticks to the paper. General Wyvern 2 asks... I have to flip the page. That's not his question. That was just a remark. Oh, lordy. Okay, then. Does not win me have a fan club? No, but I sure as hell deserve one, you bugger. So you better make sure you wreck one for me. Well, they have it. Okay. Daniel Hartnett asks, which is better, Cambridge or Oxford? Are you insane? Cambridge University. For those of you who are not familiar with Cambridge, is a little bit like Harvard, except it's actually prestigious. Okay, Christine Nell asks, Dear Professor Doctor, I'm afraid you're not all that interesting, but I'd like to know if it's true that Lord Winnemere is actually the brains of your outfit. I'm so fancy, I'm afraid you're not all that interesting. Well, I'll tell you what, I am very interesting. He's not the brains, I'm the brains. Look at this head capacity, look at my head capacity. Yeah. Tommy Tracy asks, Dear Professor, one, I'm a grad student at the University of Virginia, and I, uh, you, you can't help it, don't worry about it. And I was wondering if we could discuss your curriculum for penology. I'm in an engineering field. Yeah, that will never do. 
but I would like to study penology as well. I would potentially petition UVA to start such a program. Yes. 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 Do it. Engineering is completely useless. Penology is useful every day. Every time you pick up a pen, you have something to do. It's great. Do it. Um, curriculum for penology? Oh, there are many questions. Introduction to penology. Um, there is... Um, Maybe this is a good moment to tell you a little bit more about phenology. I'm just assuming a comfy position here. I'm readjusting Lord Winnemere. Penology. What's it all about? When you study penology, what do you find in the faculty? What type of topics can you study? Well, penology is subdivided in a bunch of fields. Penology goes back all the way to the Romans. They use the word penna. Yes. It goes back a long way. Very old science much older than something ridiculous like psychology. Uh, pseudoscience. Bloody hell. I guess that means. Yeah. Anyway, penology. Beautiful science. I'm the chair of penology at Cambridge University, and as chair, I'm supposed to know a little bit about everything in the field of penology. Everything. There's a lot to know. A lot to know. Um, <clears throat> my specialty is nibology. Nibology is definitely a field that requires a lot of study to learn to identify extra fine, fine, medium, broad, double broad, triple broad, obliques, italics, stubs, uh, cursive italics, etc. Very hard work and uh, that's my, my specialty. Um, there are other fields, uh, for example, flexuology. Flexuology, uh, these are we have one professor, she's very good at what she does, uh, at flexuology, and what, you know, sometimes couples come to us and they have problems having good flex. They come to us, she is very knowledgeable, very nice, soothing person, she sits down with them and she says, well, how do you have flex? How do you do it? And then they explain everything, and then she says, well, you should do things differently. For example, warm up the nib first. Um, try to have flex in a different spot than you usually do. Uh, try to relax more. Uh, try to take your time. Uh, engage in a lot of foreplay, you know, warming up the nib, making sure it's, it's well lubricated, and only then start to have flex. So it's a very, very useful field, I would say, the nibology. Then there is padism. Padism is a field that is not so much related to the pen, it's related to the pads writing pads. You cannot really use a pen if you don't have good paper. You can't use it. You can't use it. So people use padism. We have a very good professor on that. Yes, padism. Very nice guy. Um, I, I get along very well with him. Um, he has a pad stock. Yes. And he is, he is very fond of his stock. His stock is called Sir Henry V. And he, he often we often uh, uh, walk them uh, together. Lord Winnemere and the stock. Yeah, and it's a great, it's a great event. Yes, I, I very much like. It. Anyway, we're talking about penology, so that's that. So we got nibology. We have sec. Uh, no, no. What did I say? Every so flexuology, and uh, we have padism. Uh, and then I have to say, there is a field. I'm slightly embarrassed to admit it, but there is a field that I am trying to get rid of. Trying to get rid of. But it's one professor. He's a very old fellow. It's very stubborn, very hard to get out. Um, it's a somewhat bit of pseudoscience. Yes. It's called the psychology of the pen. And I, I don't like it. It's not a hard science, like penology, nibology. I'm trying to get him out, but it's been very, very difficult. Anyway, I hope that answers your question, Tommy. Now, the second question was, why the hat? Because I get cold. Third, what pens do you like to use? Fountain pens. Musk and Dusk asked Professor Dr. Tarkin Nagelke. What is your true relationship with Esbury Brown? He was my student. The, there seems to be so much emotion in your voice when you speak of Mr. Brown. Yeah, he was a terrible letter, that's why. That I can't help but wonder whether the two of you are more than close friends. Are you suggesting something? Please tell. Oh, and please give a special kiss to Lord Winnemere for me. I think he's very sexy. There you go, Lordy. Now, um, a special relationship? No, there's no special relationship between me and Esbury Brown. Definitely not. 
Edgar Hernandez says, Dr. Angry, which your favorite fountain pen inks and why? I'm fairly partial to Dye Mine. Dye Mine is a very nice color, it's also from England. God save our gracious queen, God, etc. Makes me very proud to use those inks. Also like the Conway Stewart inks for the very same reason. Um, then we have Neil Tomlinson. He says, Yo, Doc! Yo! I, I understood that this is what you should do in these cases. Uh, do you live in Amsterdam and commute to Cambridge, or do you actually live in England? Also, your pet looks nice in the hat, but I think it would look better in some butter sort. I don't think so. No, I actually live in Cambridge. I have rooms in the uh, university. The official Crafty TV asks, So, Professor, why do you dislike Mr. S.B. Brown ever so much? Surely there's more. Uh, I just told you. So, don't worry. B. Colax asks, Can you show us your diploma? Um, can do, but won't. Then we have Sass9507 asks, What's up with the stuffed animals, Professor? Stuffed animals? I'm not a taxidermist, I'm a penologist. This is my pet, Lord Windermere. XC Arco asks, Why is your lobster alive? Well, he wouldn't say a lot if he were dead, would he? Austin Maloney asks, Professor Dr. Tarquin Dangleby, What in the hell kind of accent do you have? My accent. Also, what is your favorite pen for drawing and favorite ink to drink? Pen for drawing? Platinum Death Pen. Favorite ink to drink? Lita Tea. Flavors, you know, taste a bit like tea. Sharik Arafat asks, Professor, can you imitate Asbury Brown? And that's an interesting question. I'm sure I can give it my very best shot. Hey there! Today we will be talking about this pen, which is very nice. Look at my hands wave around like I'm an interesting person. Well, I hope this was useful, and uh, that's all let's do it. Bye bye! <coughs> I was coughing. Rainbow Bubbles asks If you were stuck alone in a desert with Lord Windermere, would you eat him to survive? Definitely not. I can bear to do such a thing. Lay Hagar says, LOL. LOL. Sincera with four A's says, Sun Tzu, what books do you read? Well, obviously, Sun Tzu. I would love to see your books you have in your possession. Well, I have so many books in my possession, I can't possibly start to show you. Most of them at the university anyway. And I'm an S.B. Brown's pad here, so sorry. Thierry Burton asks, Do you really think that pink ink or pink red ink, as stunning as Tsuji Pilot Iro Shizuku ink, is not at all for men to write with? No. Jerry Bernard asks, If you are head of penology department, what is your main area of study? Well, as I said, nibology is kind of where I specialize. So I study the structure of nibs, uh, different nib grades, uh, uh, hardness, springiness, flexiness, flow, these kinds of things. Genuine Eyes asks, okay, here are a few at the top of my head, lol. How do you spend your weekends? Well, usually playing with my pen. I get up late, I play with my, my pen until it squirts ink all over the page, and then I get back to bed again. Uh, what was your most embarrassing moment? Well, at one time, um, I accidentally squirted ink too early. Uh, it has happened, and it's it's quite unpleasant. Three, what is your favorite food? I would say steak and ale pie. That's a classic. Do you have any nicknames? Um, they call me the oversized pen, but for legal reasons, I can't tell you why. What is your biggest fear? My biggest fear is being put into a bathtub full of base state glue and slowly dissolving. What is your most annoying habit? I don't know, I don't think I have any habits. What was your last argument with Lord Windermere about? We never have arguments. Great fellow, we get along so well. You have a girlfriend or you spend most of your time with Lord Windermere? No, most of my time with Lord Windermere, as I said. Christopher Ford asks, Sir, do you like crab salad as your pet lobster does? Oh yes, I love it. <clears throat> also, if you do this Q&A video, won't your haggis eating friend want to do one too? It's possible. I don't know if he has a lot to say there. 
The city is 73 asked, Professor, do you have an interest in medicine? Oh, yes. Whenever I see medicine, I always take it. You never know. It's probably going to be good. Drexel Grigori asks, Professor Dr. Lord Voldemort. What the hell is that? What were you high on when you made this video? I'm never high. I mean, I'm as high as I can be because I'm pretty much the most exalted person in the world. Zil Knita asks, What is your favorite pen and ink combination? Corey Stewart Winston with Ackermann or Feverhood. Very nice guy. Which pen and ink annoys you the most? A big ballpoint. How did you not win a I Already told you that. Houston trying to ask Professor Dr. Tiger Dangleberry, what do you do in your spare time? As I said, play with my pen. Captain Keck asks, why do you feel to be superior to F. B. Ray Brown? Because I am. That's simple. Patrick Whelan asks, what is the best value pen you have come across? I got Faber Castell Basic for thirteen pounds. Yeah, that's a pretty good one. BDM450 asks, Professor, are you an SBB Brown related? No. Is he perhaps your illegitimate son? Illegitimate son? No. You two look very much alike? No. Is this a sort of a Darth Vader Luke Skywalker situation? You mean like... <sighs> SBB Brown. Obi-Wan never told you what happened to your father. I stabbed him to death with a pen! <sighs> no, I don't think so. Anyway. Sibiable asks, I think Dangle Bob shops at BHS, aka British Home Stores in Baker Street. Lord Winnemere most definitely a patron of Geeves and Hawks on Savile Row. Yes, that's correct. Queen Katz asks, this profession request prefer this question is for Professor Dr. Tarquin Dangle. Are you smarter than the intelligent, suave, survival skill Esbury Brown himself? I would say so. Spend an evening with me, sweetheart, and you will never forget that. And this question is for Lord Winnemere. Do you agree with the professor's answer? This man has never been with a woman in his entire bloody life, so I wouldn't be too sure about that. In fact, I think he may be full of sh Yes, thank you, Lord Winnemere. Thank you. It's quite enough. Heaven's sake. Luat Parag asks, What happens if you run out of crab salad? Have you ever tried lobster salad? No, definitely not. Lord Winnemere never runs out because under his top hat is an emergency packet of crab salad. Ninja Cleaner says, love it, love it, love it, the art of war in and of itself cracked me up. Well, thank you very much. It's a great book. Trevor Gay, Gray, sorry, keep mispronouncing your name. Not intentional. I'm sorry. Hello, Professor Lord Winnemere, do you share everybody's interest in preparedness? Yes, I'm always prepared. I always carry pen and ink. If so, what do we Cambridge Professor and Lobster keep in their EDC? I assume you two share an EDC. Yes, I keep it under my hat. In there is my Leatherman, an emergency pack of crab salad, and a bottle of ink, because you never know. Well, my dear friends, this is the end of the questions for Professor Dr. Tarquin Nailby. I hope you enjoyed it. If not, watch the video again until you do. That's all for now. I wish you a very Merry Christmas in advance, because you can never be too early. A Happy New Year, and I will very gladly see you later. Ta-ta.